principles. These are very important aspects of scientific research and psychology. Notice I have my trusty book with me whenever I talk about psychology and whenever we discuss things in the class. It's always good for you to keep your book handy. Go through the book while I'm talking. So now you should open up your book and look for independent and dependent variables. Uh, the independent and dependent variables are very essential when anybody does research using the scientific method. You'll get them confused at first, which is why it's good to have this short video to help you understand the difference. An independent variable is a variable that is controlled by an experimenter. So, let's say I'm interested, as I was when I was in graduate school, um, the school board from Lexington, Kentucky, I went to the University of Kentucky Graduate School, they came to us and they were concerned about students smoking marijuana. And they said, hey, we need to do a study on whether marijuana affects a student's memory. Now, we thought, well, this is an interesting study. Now, this was in the 80s, so, you know, marijuana wasn't, uh, it was very illegal. So we had to determine, you know, what can we, can we do this? How can we do a study using marijuana? So we wrote a proposal and we sent it to the National Institute of Health. So we were interested in studying the effects of marijuana on memory. And therein lies a little hint on independent and dependent variables. Whenever you read a, a study in psychology, generally the independent and dependent variables are listed in that title. An independent variable is what you are interested in. In our case, the independent variable was going to be marijuana. And we wanted to find out how does marijuana specifically influence memory. So we had our independent variable, marijuana. Now we couldn't go out in the street and buy marijuana, illegal, as I said. So we decided to ask the government and the government thought this was a great idea. Um, the other very interesting and very important part of any science is that all of your variables, you know, think about the word variable for a minute. Variable, it varies, it changes, right? So all these variables have to be controlled. You can't just randomly find some marijuana and use it in a study. You have to know exactly what is in that and it has to be the same across all our subjects. So in our specific study, the independent variable had to be the amount of THC, which is the active ingredient in marijuana, that, that amount had to be the same for all of our subjects. Plus, we wanted to see if high amounts of THC differed in terms of memory from low amounts of THC. So what the government did for us was mix up a batch of smokable marijuana, um, and in one group, it had large amounts of THC, high amounts if you know what I'm talking about, and low amounts of THC. In our case, we had 0.5 grams of THC per ounce of marijuana. That was the low dose. In the high dose, it was 1.5 grams of THC per ounce of marijuana. Um, and then we had some marijuana without any THC in it at all. So, each level of that marijuana is called the independent variable. It's independent because we have control over how much goes in, and in this case the government mixed it for us, so we knew when it got to us where the 1.5 marijuana cigarettes were, where the 0.5, and where the no THC. So different levels of our independent variable were going to be given to our subjects. Now our subjects we're not going to know which level was in which cigarette. Now, the other aspect of the study was the dependent variable. It's called dependent because the dependent variable is dependent on the independent variable. So, in our case, marijuana was the independent variable, memory was the dependent variable. And what we did was, you know, how do you define memory? Well, that's where those operational definitions came in, and you know, in your, in your book we talk about operational definitions. An operational definition is a definition that allows a term to be measured. All right? So, memory itself is meaningless unless we can measure it. 
In our case, we were going to show our subjects 40 words using a slide projector, and they would watch each word four seconds, and at the end of the 40 words, they were, we asked them to write down as many words as possible. So, the trick is, our subjects came into our lab, we had six subjects, they sat down in a little table, they were given, um, they were given the instructions of what was going to go on, um, and then we gave them a pretest. We just showed them 40 words, they wrote down as many as possible. So all six of our subjects, before they smoked any marijuana, to, wrote down as many words as possible. Then we gave them their six cigarettes. Each subject got one marijuana cigarette. They were randomly distributed. distributed. So, you know, if you got 1.5, we didn't know who got what. All right. Um, in your book, it'll talk to you a little bit about double blind, where the, some of the investigators, myself included, didn't know which marijuana had the high dose, which had the low dose, which was controls. So we gave each one of the subjects with their cigarette, we left the room, they smoked, they were under the uh, watchful eye of, of a nurse who was not actually in the room, but he or she was there watching them, so no health issues happened. Um, after they were done smoking, um, and we cleared the, the room out with smoke, we came back in and we gave them another 40 words. So remember, the pretest, no marijuana. The post-test, after they smoked, they got a whole different list of 40 words, and they had to write down the words. And then we were able to have measurable dependent variables. A dependent variable is the variable that you measure based on the independent variable which was marijuana. Now, please think about this, because, you know, what if the group that got the control just had bad memories? You know, we had to make a, a conclusion without any, with a reason, without reasonable doubt here. We, we've got to have a conclusion beyond reasonable doubt that the memory was due, the memory issue was due to the marijuana and not by chance, which is one of the reasons why we use a lot of subjects. Okay, so we use a lot of different subjects, and, and our, in our particular study, the subjects came one week, and then they came back, the same group of subjects came back the next week and took the test all over again, only in this time they took a different, they got a different dose. Now, the primary investigator of the, of the study made sure that the same subject did not get the same dose. So you either got control one group, or you got a high group, or you were in the low group, but you always were in a different group. Plus, you were always tested against yourself because you were tested pre before you smoked any marijuana. So, independent variables. The variable that is controlled, in our case, it was the amount of THC, and the dependent variable, what is measured, which is how many words they could remember. In our case, that was our definition of memory. So, I will leave you with one thing to ponder. Let's say I was doing a study on swimming pool temperature, okay, and I wanted to know if the temperature of a swimming pool water was lower, would the swimmer swim faster? So I had three pools with different temperatures, a high temperature, moderate temperature, and a cooler temperature, and then I had professional swimmers swim. What is the independent variable, and what is the dependent variable? Can you think of some examples? Good luck with that, and if you have any questions about this video, please, please post them on our question link. Have a great day.